Welcome to the Joy of the Lord Show. This week's show is brought to you by the RIC Church, anonymous donors, and supporters and viewers like you. Our musical director is Christian Caulfield. And now, to introduce this week's special guest, it's your host, Father Richard Hill. Welcome. Welcome to the Joy of the Lord Show. Thank you for having us into your homes and into your hearts. We've got a really good show for you today, so let's just get right into it. We're going to take care of the gratitude section. We have a gratitude section every week. And this week, we're grateful to a group of people called the Texas Renewal Project. Uh, if for no other reason, because they flew my wife and I down to Austin twice now and put us up in a nice hotel so that we could listen to some really good speakers try to convince us to come back and convince you to go out and register and vote. And uh, whether you register and vote or not, they're really good people. Uh, I went on the internet and tried to look them up to get more information, and wouldn't you know it, there's page after page of all kinds of terrible things being said about them. I couldn't even find their website because it was just covered up with page after page of all these newsletters talking about how terrible these people were. So you know they're doing something right. If they weren't, why then they wouldn't be getting quite such a response. Uh, we've been able to talk to quite a few wonderful ministers from around the nation there. And um, uh, it's something for you just to consider that if every Christian or every person who said he was a Christian would register and vote, we would take over this nation again. This post-Christian nation would become at least a nation where the people who ran it were a little bit more concerned with what we thought. And there'd be a little bit less outrage every single night on the news. So... We want to thank the Texas Renewal Project, and I told the kids again that they had to come up with something new for Lammy Pie, so this, this one just takes the cake. I mean, one of these days we'll probably have a cake up here that they bake or something, but this one takes the cake. Okay, first off, this, to me it's a pirate's chest, but I got corrected. I got told that on the old ships, they would call this a keep. Okay, they would call this a keep. And if I can open this keep, let's see what's inside of it. Oh, check it out. There is the movie star herself, Miss Lammy Pie. How about that? So Miss Lammy Pie is in the keep, right? And this is what she's keeping in the keep. She is keeping the faith. So this particular prop from Lammy Pie. I think she had some help from the kids again. They want her on the show every week. I tell them they have to come up with something new. Keep the faith. And it goes along with the people that we're thanking today, the Texas Renewal Project, because they want you to keep the faith and believe that our nation was founded on Christians. There are a bunch of liars who say we weren't. And all you've got to do is read the original documents. In 1920-something, now I'm going, to, I'm going to be real accurate here, 1920-something, a new idea came into being, and that was the economic, the economic interpretation of history. What that means is that everything that ever happened in history, if you want to understand it, you have to look to the economics. And as a result, you probably believe that the reason why we broke away from Britain was no taxation without representation. Every school child is taught that. That is number 17 of 27 reasons given by our founding fathers. The 17th one was no taxation without representation, and many of them before that talked about religious freedoms and God and what God wants for man, but we're not going to talk about those. Why? They're going to teach in public school that we broke away from the British and the whole Revolutionary War was about no taxation without representation. And no child would have given that answer on a test before the 20s because they were taught 27 reasons. Don't believe it? Get the Declaration of Independence. Read it for yourself. 
Okay. So, to the people at the Texas Renewal Project, I think Lammy Pie's taking a nap now. Lammy Pie wants to say, keep the faith, and they want to tell you to keep the faith, and don't believe what you're hearing. What we're hearing on the news is that we're losing. But you know, I just, I'm not going to quote any particular elections because we're neither this nor that, we're Christian. But I am going to tell you that recently, once again, the polls said that this one particular man who has strong Christian values had no chance of winning. And he won. And they are running around the House of Representatives like a bunch of chickens with Colonel Sanders coming, wondering who's going to be next. And it was the Christian majority who finally woke up and voted to bring that man into office. Why don't you help us do the same where you are? If you don't know who to vote for, go to the polls, take a blank ballot, and put it in the box. You voted. You voted. Okay, enough for that. We're going to go into our show today. <clears throat> today, like I said, we've got a really good show. Our shows have been adding and stacking on each other. We we'll just let the Lord have his way. We've been praying about it. All the people that tell me what to do, and there are plenty, have been telling me to let the Lord stack these shows up. And the, the last show, if you'll remember, we had some wonderful brothers who came in here, brother and sister team, who uh, they're not brother and sister. They're black brother and a black sister of ours who came in here and sang some really beautiful songs, and we got to sit at this table and talk about racism in the, in the church and how it has no place in the church, and why. You know, so it was a wonderful show. It was, if you missed it, too bad. You don't need to miss these shows. Tune in every week. So that put a cap on our icing on the cake we've been baking. What we've been talking about is we've been talking about how if you believe in Jesus Christ and him crucified, and you believe that, he, that you need a Savior, and that he did it all. He did the complete job. If you believe that, then you're my brother and you're my sister. And we need to work together. And we need to stop splitting hairs and separating from each other. We need to start working together. We need to start praying together. And the whole world would probably become Christian almost overnight if we did. So it's time for us to stop spending so much money and the ways that we do to try to evangelize, and then knitting, pit, picking knits, as Jesus called it, straining out the gnats and swallowing the camels. And I think there's a whole lot of people with lumps in their throat in the church from swallowing those camels. So if you don't believe like I do, great, praise God. If you believe like the thief on the cross did, he said that he deserved death. He said he didn't deserve any better. He asked Jesus Christ to remember him in his kingdom. So he admitted Jesus had a kingdom. And he asked Jesus to remember him in that kingdom. And if you've done that, then you're my brother or you're my sister. Just like those people on the set last week, <clears throat> race means nothing compared to that. And if it does to you, then I'm sorry, let's start praying together. Let's start praying the Lord will show you the truth. We got a prayer we're going to share with you a little later on in this, in this show. And I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to say all you people that say, oh, I'm a big Christian. I'm going to challenge you to pray this prayer with me. Let's see how big a Christian you are. As we call it the knockdown, kickdown prayer, and it's time for it to go out there. And it's time for us to start praying it, and it's time for us to come together. <clears throat> and if you uh, have... If you have the strength of Christianity that you say you do, this is going to be an interesting little prayer for all of us. And I'd appreciate it if you'd stay tuned. And after the song, we'll cover the knockdown, kickdown prayer. But for right now, we have Christian Caulfield, our music minister, with a song that he put together. By the way, let me explain something very quickly about it. The background track that you hear is all Christian. He has a small studio and he plays every single instrument, and he sings every single part, and he puts it together for this show. It's not some karaoke tape that we went down to the store and bought. It's every single track, every single instrument, every note, every bit of the mixing of the background track he did for you.
for this song on this show. Christian? Well, thank you, Christian. Why don't you come on over here and sit down and let's talk a little bit. While he's getting over here, uh, like I said before, we have a special prayer that we pray in our group when somebody gets really, really serious and they have a real big problem that they want to know why isn't it getting fixed? Why isn't God helping them? Why isn't the answer coming? Why is it taking so long? Like I like to say, I know so many people who chased and chased and chased God until they finally got tired and sat down and God caught them. They had been chasing them the whole time, but they thought they were chasing him. So, um, Christian, how are you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having me on today. Appreciate it very much. It's great to be here. Good deal. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you know what prayer I'm talking about. You bet. Uh, tell me a little bit about how that, what that prayer has meant to you. Well, it's been a whole, whole lot. It's helped me to see God's truth about who I am and who I'm not. Um, it's just one example. It's reaching out to the Father God, asking for his help for us to see ourselves clearly and uh, hopefully become more like Christ as a result. So. Well, it, it's based on the idea that uh, if we have a sincere, severe problem with God, it's normally our fault, but we don't really want to hear that. But it but it's normally, normally is. A lot of times we just can't see it. A lot of times what's in the way of us seeing our problem is us. A lot of our habits from our youth, a lot of the people around us telling us we're right, uh, surrounding ourselves with people who already agree with us, going to places where people basically agree like we or think like we do, and... And pretty soon, somebody who doesn't think like you, you can have a real problem with them and not really know why. And think that it's either because they're totally wrong or it gets to be confusing, especially in, with couples. Uh, you loved each other a lot. You got married or you started dating or something and, and then something happened. I mean, you know, it's, it, it totally confuses people oftentimes. Well, if you've got a problem <clears throat> that you'd like a little help with, you've got a big problem. 
uh, then we've got a prayer, but be, be ready because you better hold on to your hats. This prayer will get you some kind of an answer. And it may not be the answer you want. We call it the knockdown, kickdown prayer. And let me warn you to start with, it has a whole lot to do with agreeing with God in any battle that might be going on with you. <clears throat> in other words, you side with God against yourself in any disagreement that you have with God, whether you realize it or not. And we covered in the show what was King David, why was he a man after God's own heart with the horrible things that that guy did at times? Well, we think it was because he ran to God with his problems with God. So he was a man after God's own heart, even when he was in trouble with God. So anyway, uh, the knockdown, kickdown prayer, if you want to agree with this at the end of it, you can just say, I agree in Jesus' name. If you want to say amen, that's all right, but that's just pretty much like saying goodbye at the end of a telephone call, isn't it? Amen, hang up, I'm done. <clears throat> we don't really mean amen or amen like it used to mean. It used to mean a whole lot of things, like I totally agree, let it be, and so on. So the Bible tells us there's no name with any power except the name of Jesus. So if you agree in Father Richard's name or in Christian's name or in your name, that doesn't mean a thing to me, and it shouldn't mean a thing to you. But if you agree in Jesus' name, that'll mean something. So at the end of this, if you really want an answer to a prayer, if you've got a problem that you'd like to share, that you'd like to get some kind of an answer to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray this prayer, and you be filling in the blanks with your problem, and at the end of it, you just say out loud, I agree in Jesus' name, and it'll have power. Uh, Christian, you remember the times that we had people come to us for counseling or, or in discussions, and uh, we'd get them to agree in Jesus' name, and they'd honestly think that that name wouldn't make any difference. They thought it was kind of like Santa Claus or Spider-Man or, you know, they, they, they'd say, okay, I'll agree in Jesus' name. <laughs> and, and then all of the times that we got to see the, the power behind that name, what would happen, and the people that said it didn't really even believe it. There's power in that name. I don't care what anyone tells you, there's power in that name. You don't think so, just wait till you the next time you're in a public place like a restaurant and just say, oh, the power of the blood of Jesus. And look around you real quick. You'll see people going, amen, and you'll also see people going, oh, my gosh, oh. <laughs> I mean, let's hurry up and get out of here, Herman. Did you leave the tip? We got to go. <laughs> you'll, you'll see everything, the whole range of things. But if you say the blood of Mickey Mouse or something, you're not going to get much of a, of a reaction. So the name of Jesus has power whether the people even using it know it or not. So anyway, um, let's just go ahead and pray the prayer, Christian. You want to? Yeah, it'd be great. Okay. Um, you want to or you want me to? Why don't you go ahead? <laughs> I don't know what he's going to say. <laughs> kind and heavenly Father, <clears throat> to whom all hearts are open and all thoughts are known, we come before you in our attempt to be your humble and obedient children obeying your word to bring all things before you in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So first and foremost, we thank you. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for your salvation plan for us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you did on the cross. And we thank you that you did not leave us where you found us when you saved us, but rather that thou art the triune God who searches the world over for whom he may bless. We say, here we stand with hands outstretched, ready to receive another blessing at your hands, even though we don't deserve at all what you've already done. But trusting in your goodness to give and in no righteousness of our own to receive. Father God, we now pray in, that you would come in power and authority and that you would knock down all doors, kick down all walls, break out all windows within the building that is our mind, that you would come into us that you would grab us by the back of our head, that you would pry our eyes wide open to your truth, that you would slam our faces into your truth, that you would not let us turn to the right or the left until we see and have recognized your truth. And Father God, we consider this a favor from you. Please come and go right past everything that we've erected to stop you, everything that we've done, everything that the enemy has built within us. Please destroy it to show us your truth and not let us turn to the right or to the left until we see it. And we pray for this wonderful, marvelous, unearned grace and mercy at your hands.
trusting in you. And we pray for it in Jesus' name. And if you agree with that prayer, you, say, you can say, I agree in Jesus' name. But I buckle your seatbelt, even if you're sitting on your couch, if you've got one. <laughs> because believe me, something's going to change in your life pretty quick. We've seen it. Now, I have people that told me, do not share that prayer on the air. Hey, that rhymes. Do not share <laughs> that prayer on the air. However, I don't see any reason to talk to you about Jesus and him crucified and leave out the power of it, the power in the blood, the power of what comes next. If you're not changing, you're not doing it right. Uh, I don't want to make you mad at me, but at the same time, if I don't tell you the truth, then, then I'll be held accountable for that. Here's an opportunity for you to hear the truth. The things that are wrong with me are my problem, not God's. But sometimes I can't see how they're my problem. I need his help to overcome my defenses. I need his help to overcome the very smart way that the enemy keeps me from seeing how wrong I am. I mean, I'm, I, you, you'd be amazed at how righteous I am in my own mind. <laughs> I, mean, I, I just don't see how everybody else in the world can't understand how righteous I am when I look at it from within myself. But when God shows me how I look from his point of view, oh my word. I don't have to work on being humbled. Uh, it, it'll humble you. So, Christian, what do you think about that prayer? I mean, it's what? awesome. Just like you said, knock down all doors, kick, bust down all windows, kick down all fences. But doesn't it sound like terrible things are? I mean, how come you can say it's awesome? What, what's good about it? It's, it get, gets past our defenses and gets down to the, the deepest core within us. And, well, well, what happens then? And then the Lord shows you what's wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, and but you, then what happens? I mean, I wouldn't yeah. ask people to look at how rotten you are if there's no reason. Right. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't look at how rotten I am if it didn't do me any good. I mean, I was perfectly happy being rotten way back when until God showed me the truth. I mean... I, every man seems right in his own way until his neighbor comes and examines him and, and, uh, or until the Lord shows him. And if you ask him, like with the knockdown, kickdown, he's faithful and true to perform it. So what I'm trying to get Christian to do here, see, I'm, I'm stepping him along to it, is why in the world would anybody do this? What's, what, what's the payoff? You bet. If you get to look at yourself with Jesus and then as a result, you become free because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he sets you free from your uh, oppression from the enemy. And right. that, now, you realize that to a lot of people, that's just going to sound like a lot of words. You know, okay. it's going to sound like what we call taking good words or maybe the scripture and throwing it in a chipper <laughs> and letting it spling up on a wall that has some glue on it. You know, you've heard people that do that. You know, they just quote scripture after scripture after scripture. So to some people it might sound that way, why don't you get a little more specific? What has the knockdown, kickdown prayer done for you? What areas of your life are different because of it? I would say every area in my life is different. Um, it's humbled me. It's made, uh, made me see his truth. And, but that truth has set me free in those areas. And that's just a Set wonderful, you free from what? From, from my own my old man within me, from my pride in those areas. Um, Did from, you know that that was what was holding you back? No way. I didn't know that was holding It was mostly back. my fault and other people's fault, That's right. right. That's exactly right. Until God showed you. <laughs> and, and a lot of it had Father Richard's face on it too, right? <laughs> <laughs> when, when the Lord show, when God shows you, it's, it's such an overwhelming, you know, his presence. Um, and there's nothing but the truth there when you, see, when you get to see that. And um, it's important to see the truth about ourselves. Um, it's, just, it's a huge benefit. Um, so we can become more like Christ. Well, let me tell you something, folks. God's God, and he won't get over it. He created the universe, and if you want to be happy, you will be happy in God's universe. Now, we all make up our own universe, and we go flying around in it, and from time to time, it crashes into God's universe, and those are what we call tragedies. And then we sit down and pray for God to fix what we broke, and we call those miracles. So it's better to just go into it to begin with and say, Lord, where am I out of sync with you? Where do I need to walk with you? And the more you do that, the less miracles you're going to need, the less disasters you're going to have, and the more you're going to see the truth, the more you're going to have life and life more abundant, which is Zoe life. It's going to be simpler. You're going to understand things better. You're going to understand other people. You just can't control them, but you're going to understand them better. 
You're going to be able to have self-discipline and self-control, which is uh, the Greeks called self-discipline and self-control sanity. It's the last of the fruit of the Spirit, the very last one. I think Jesus put it there on purpose, you know, that, that in his word, that, um, you know, love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, long-suffering, meekness, mildness, self-discipline and self-control, which is sanity. That's all one word. And so why would the Greeks say self-discipline showed sanity? Well, because if you can't do what you want to do, that's not really a sane life. You're not really living your life. Someone else is. Now, my question is, who's living your life if you aren't? Two minutes and 40 seconds, Christian. Who's, who's living the, your life if you aren't? The enemy. Well, who is the enemy? The Satan. The enemy. The well, darkness. how in the world is he living your life for you if you're, if you're not living in God's truth? Wow, that's a, that's a deep question. <laughs> yeah, I like doing that to him. <laughs> Can you help me out with that? Well, well sure. Um, I wasn't expecting you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Yeah, you did. Uh, yeah, you did. Uh, Satan uses your pride against you, and you're born into pride. The Bible calls that iniquity. King David uh, explains all that iniquity. We're born into pride. And that default to pride, you know, a two-year-old, you say, don't touch the table, glass table, and he's got to touch it anyway and look you right in the eye. That default to, to pride is called iniquity in the Bible. And so Satan gets his first shot at you, and then you keep trying to make it right by making excuses and, and saying, well, it's not my fault. And if you just take responsibility for the things you do wrong and try to forgive the people around you for what they've done wrong, then they can't fool you that much anymore. You'll see it. It won't be hidden behind things. You'll, you'll be amazed at how clear things become if you walk with the Lord and let him show you. And the knockdown, kickdown prayer is a good way to start. If you want to, call, write, and we'll send you a copy. You can email it, send it hard copy or whatever. But I'd like to see how many people out there that say, oh, I'm a big old Christian. I do that stuff all the time. How often you'll say that prayer once a day with me. Because if you'll say it in agreement with me, it makes it more powerful for me, and it'll make it more powerful for you. There's power in agreement. That's another principle we'll go into on another show. I can't believe our time is gone, Christian. What do you think about that? That's awesome. It's great to be a part of the show and just to flow. And Thank you, beauty. Jesus. That's right. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Well, we call this show the Joy of the Lord Show. This has been a pretty serious show. Maybe it hasn't seemed that I'm very joyful today, but I'm explaining to you where my joy comes from. My joy comes from the Lord, not what I think he ought to do, not what the plans I make. How many times do we really say, Lord, this is what you ought to do. I'll start, and if you don't get there before me, you can catch up when you get there. You know, How about if we follow him? How about if we relax in the Lord and ask him to show us, and from now on, try to please him? And that's the final word. Thank you for watching the Joy of the Lord show. Tune in next Saturday at 6 to share the joy of the Lord with us again. We have been chosen.